today with Bob Courtney, and he is Madison's mayor. He's actually stepped in for uh, Damon Welch after the incident that happened with him, and he's also going to be the new mayor. So we're going to ask you today some questions about being the new mayor. What is, you know, the first thing that uh, two months that you've been in, what have you had to face? Well, first of all, thanks for the invitation here today. Uh, it's hard to believe that almost two months have already passed yeah. uh, since I was caucused in as mayor, and caucused in as mayor, and then uh, went on to win the election in November. So uh, it's actually been very eventful, and I'm grateful to uh, the staff and the city employees who have welcomed me and have also given me a lot of support in these two months. That it's been a big challenge, though, hasn't it? There's been a lot going on. I mean, uh, if you saw my whiteboard in my office, you'll see a long laundry list of things that, not only things that Mayor Welch had in progress that I've committed to continue working on with mm -hmm. his team, uh, but also starting to frame up our own uh, strategic objectives for 2020 and beyond. That's, that's a big challenge. We have to put everything in place and get it all going. Mm -hmm. And one of the challenges that you've had to face is the issue with the homeless and you know different entities in the community. How have you all managed to put all that together? Well, as the weather got colder, uh, we learned that the uh, warming shelter at Salvation Army uh, had some changes in their rules that we weren't familiar with. So immediately upon learning that, my team got together and we decided that on an urgent uh, emergency basis that the city would provide interim warming shelter so that we can protect the life of the residents here that needed shelter. While we work things out uh, with the Salvation Army to help them with the volunteer and financial resources that they're going to need in order to reopen. And they've been very cooperative and we've had a lot of strong support from our community to help that initiative. Now, there are some things that the community can do in order to help with this, isn't there? Yes. Yeah, two primary things that we need from the community. Volunteer resources. Um, we've been coordinating that through River, River Valley Resources. Mm -hmm. They've been fantastic uh, utilizing their network of, of arranging volunteers. Right. Uh, the people who do volunteer to uh, work at the, at the shelter need to go through a program with the Salvation Army. It's called Safe From Harm. And um, once they go through, it's, a, it's just a couple hour training, they could go through background investigation, right. and they would be eligible to help us actually operate the shelter. There are other services that the Salvation Army provides, so volunteering isn't limited to the shelter. Uh, Salvation Army needs uh, volunteers for a wide variety of services that they perform that are valuable to our community. And that's a vital service to our community. Vital. The, the Salvation Army is a big, big important entity in our community. It really is. Uh, they feed the hungry, uh, they clothe uh, uh, people who need uh, help with clothing, they're helping us now reopen the warming shelter so that we can protect life. Uh, they do a lot of good for our community. Uh, right now the Red Kettle campaign is going on, right. which they're dependent upon um, the uh, charitableness of our community to help raise enough money to continue partially offsetting their, their annual operating budget. Uh, they also have uh, a sanctuary there where they're providing uh, church services. And again, they work in partnership with a lot of uh, our other nonprofits for disaster uh, services and then just helping the needy in our community. Well, we all need to kind of remember that and try to figure out a way to help some way in that issue. Right. And the other thing that, that they need is the financial support mm -hmm. of our community. Um, in, in the coalition that we started forming a few weeks ago after the issue came about with the regulations with their shelter, um, the nonprofits River Valley Resources committed to helping arrange the volunteer resources that were needed. Uh, myself and my team uh, committed to uh, the fundraising. Uh, the, the communities responded very well on both fronts. So now we're working out the final arrangements to get the Salvation Army shelter open. In the meantime, we've just asked for the community's love, patience, kindness to make sure that we can provide for those in need in the interim basis while we work out the final details here. And they don't need to be worried about volunteering being a big issue. They can call and tell them how much time they can give or what they can do and then the Salvation Army will help them figure out where they fit in. Sure. There is a training they need, that everybody needs to go through. Right. Uh, a lot of nonprofits require uh, training if they're going to volunteer for the organization. So, um, and so far, the response has been very good. So we're really happy with that. That's been one big issue that we've kind of had to take on on an urgent need. But there's been lots of things that just, just the business of running the city's day-to-day -day operations as well as doing the strategic planning that's necessary for 2020 and beyond. Right. 
Well, we're going to be right back and talk to Bob some more about this as soon as we take a break and have a message from our sponsors. A routine is a good thing to have. And sometimes a routine is a good thing to break. Start your morning at McDonald's with a hot, savory breakfast prepared fresh every morning, like a sausage McMuffin with egg or bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit that you can now mix and match for just four bucks until 11 a.m. Because if you don't deserve a morning that's a little easier and a lot tastier, who does? Welcome back. One of the things that Bob Courtney's been working on is um, all the things that were in place and being worked on and had already been scheduled with Mayor Welch's team, you've had to pick up the ball and carry that. We have, uh, myself and my team. Um, and I'm, I'm grateful again for their support because without them helping th me through the day to day, uh, a lot wouldn't get accomplished. It, and it takes a team it to get does, it. It does take a team. And again, of course, while we're doing some of the bigger, the bigger picture things, you know, the business of running the city has to continue. So right. we've got street work, we've got trash removal, the utility work that's going on. Um, and again, the staff and all of the employees at the city, I think they're just a very committed group of people and I'm grateful to be working with them. That's awesome. If you have good support, you can do anything. Exactly. And, and it seems to be working. Right. So now with the transition, you Normally, you would just be working on a transition when you're voted in as mayor, but by you being the interim, now you have to be the mayor and work on a transition to 2020. Right. That's posed um, opportunities for opportunities. us. Um, being in the office now, I'm, I'm actually getting the advantage of the power of observation. Mm -hmm. um, validating things that I had investigated throughout the campaign, uh, or learning that there are better ways to do some things that maybe I didn't anticipate uh, that might have be, been a, a pleasant surprise. So we are taking care of some big things. I mean, uh, infrastructure is ongoing, but there were some substantial infrastructure projects that Mayor Welch had under, in, underway. Economic development, those are that's always a priority for our community. He had a couple things there as well that we're going to pivot off of. and. Uh, hope to improve but also make sure they come to fruition because economic development, infrastructure, and community safety are three of the biggest, highest priorities I think for the residents of the City of Madison and we're tackling all of them all at the same time while having an eye strategically toward 2020 and 2021 because we know that some of the infrastructure and economic development projects that Mayor Welch had in place, uh, they were long-term objectives, things that uh, weren't going to uh, close out effectively right. by the end of this year, but did need focus and attention so that we could make sure that in, in next year that they would come to fruition. So we're doing a lot of those things. One example, for uh, for example, the bridge approach. Oh, yes. uh, that's under that's under construction. That was a project that uh, Mayor Welch had uh, worked on tirelessly, see, tirelessly with his staff probably for five or six mm -hmm. years. That will get wrapped up next year. But in, uh, in addition to that, what's going to happen beyond that is uh, the road transfer arrangements where the state of Indiana will be transferring about four and a half miles of uh, State Highway 56 to the city of Madison. So it gives us an opportunity to try to re-envision what that's going to look like. Also the challenges of how we're going to pay for some of those things, particularly uh, paving, paving and doing some re repair work for uh, nearly four lanes of State Highway for four and a half miles. So we've got our work cut out for us, but we have plans in place. Uh, we're going to be applying for some grant money uh, from federal federal highway funds as well as from the state uh, of Indiana NDOT uh, community crossing grants and working to get the capital that we need to make sure that we have safe passable roads while at the same time uh, re-envisioning uh, what Main Street can look like in the next uh, three to five years. Oh, well, that's a big big scope there. <laughs> a lot of things going on, but uh, we're, uh, we're up to the task and I'm also looking forward to working with the new city council that's coming in. Uh, I think their first meeting is going to be January the 7th. So uh, all of us will be going through some form of orientation, but you know, again, the benefit that, that I'm having that I think uh, a lot of mayors, mayor elects would not have is being in the office and making these observations so that when January the 1st, uh, 2020, uh, we'll be hitting the ground running and that we'll, all of our uh, transition uh, team will have done their work and we'll have the team in place going forward. 
for these major initiatives? Well, by being in there, you actually do have a big advantage because you see how things function, how they run, and that even helps you figure out what team you need, what dynamics need to be in that team, and it, it makes a big difference. Yeah, the transition analysis is actually quite comprehensive. I mean, we're looking at public safety, both right. with Mass and Police Department, Mass and Fire Department. Mm -hmm. We have a fantastic uh, organization both there that we're trying to see how we can improve to make sure that the residents are getting the, the safest community possible for, for the value. Uh, we're doing things on the economic development front. Uh, we're trying to improve communication and how we do things between city council and, and the mayor's office, for example. Uh, there's just a, a number of things that we're, uh, we're dealing with in, on communication, economic development, infrastructure, public safety. The things that we, we actually promised we would do during the campaign, we're going to make sure that we live up to those, uh, those obligations and for the community placing their trust in us. And you're also trying to make sure that the public understands which department they need to go to when they have an issue. Sometimes people think they can go to one entity and ask questions and then they'll take care of it, but in fact they need to go to certain departments for different things. Well, that's true, uh, but one of the things that, that we do every week is I get the team together mm -hmm. and we talk about priorities and challenges from each department. Right. What we want is to make sure that every department he head has the knowledge of what's going on elsewhere. So they're, they're more uh, better educated and they can field those questions and direct people uh, more quickly and also help resolve issues that come up from time to time across our community. That's a big issue because now there's, that's going to break down some of the misconceptions and the misinformation they've gotten from somebody else because now if a head of the department is asked a question about a different department, he can say, no, no, you need to go talk to this person and this is how it works. Well, uh, we all have a responsibility to provide a good service to the community right. and uh, the better educated and the better informed that we are, we can do that more effectively and I think that you know, the, the goal anyway is that the residents here in the city will definitely feel like we're operating cohesively, uh, effectively, that they, that they live in a vibrant, safe, clean community, and we're also taking care of the basic needs of uh, the residents here in Madison. That's awesome. Well, before we go, have you got anything else to share with everybody that you might want to do? Well, I just uh, want to say uh, Merry Christmas to everyone. We're fast approaching uh, the Christmas uh, time period. Uh, the Light Up Madison was a big success. You'll see that there are great things going on all across our community. Please shop local. Uh, support those businesses that are here supporting our community. And uh, I want to thank you again for the opportunity to become your mayor in uh, 2020. Well, we're really glad you were here, Bob. And we're going to try to do this a little more often. Yes. So you'll be hearing from Bob and he'll let you know what's kind of going on and give you some insight. and ways you can help with all this. So. Thank you, Debbie. You're Appreciate welcome. It. You're welcome. And as always, we thank our sponsors and we thank you for watching.